Okay, so with this video, I will be talking about why is it so hard to leave a borderline or a narcissist. So first of all, uh, I think we need to premise that um, many of us uh, end up in these relationships without really having much awareness of borderline or uh, narcissism. It's uh, definitely something you tend to learn throughout the relationship but not something that most people would uh, would know and be familiar with the diagnostic criteria in the in the dsm um so um so it's hard uh, of course if we came uh, equipped uh, in these relationships with a deep understanding of uh, these personality disorders we would likely not fall for many of the traps uh, and most likely we would uh, probably avoid that uh, relationship in the first place unless you have some kind of codependency uh, issues so i have to say this is uh, the the premise is that uh, uh, you will be uh, very likely very confused uh, when uh, initiating a relationship with these people the second point is that it's not like most often they won't show these characteristics from the very beginning. They will give you some hints of uh, uh, these personality traits uh, that you might be able to see them from the very beginning. But they're not going to come out full out, uh, full uh, borderline or full uh, narcissistic because they know that this would push people away. So they are able to put on a uh, an act, an act uh, uh, normal until they get you in, until they start uh, idealizing, until they start love bombing you, and or uh, leaving you and kind of uh, manipulating you, um, and then they will start showing their true colors progressively. That was definitely the case, at least in my relationship. In the beginning, I could see some things, but they weren't so significant, you know. But as as we got closer and closer, they became bigger and bigger and bigger until until they became uh, <laughs> unavoidable, you know. So it's a bit like uh, uh, the metaphor of the or the sim uh, similar of putting the frog in the hot soup, you know. The frog uh, won't uh, realize in the beginning that uh, uh, the soup is getting warmer and warmer until it basically uh, starts boiling. And it's similar to what happens in a, in a relationship with a borderline or a, or a narcissist, you know, you start seeing a few hints, you know, but oh, this is manageable, this is manageable, until basically you end up being in a completely abusive, uh, emotionally uh, abusive uh, relationship, if not physically as well. My, my third point that I want to highlight is... Uh, is basically one of the reasons you are stuck uh, in this relationship is that there is a real uh, dependency so what they do is uh, this is the uh, trauma bond um, so basically what they provide you is they provide you these very intense uh, emotions these very intense uh, um, episodes where you know uh, you will have a great time the best time you ever had probably with anyone in the uh, in your life uh, i definitely remember when i met my borderline in the beginning i thought oh my god is this person uh, for real you know i thought my ship had come in you know she was uh, fantastic she was fun she was caring she was highly sexual it was like all the things that you that you as a man probably uh, look for um so I was really, uh, I, I thought I won the lottery, you know, with this woman. And she uh, said that we had similar values about cheating and so on, which of course was a lie, by the way. But um, so uh, they kind of tick all those boxes, you know, and they give you these really intense uh, uh, emotions, you know, whether it's uh, dates, whether it's uh, taking care of you and so on which basically makes you dependent on them and then slowly they start throwing in uh, these uh, devaluations they start uh, misbehaving and uh, and they and you're just hoping that you can go back to those bliss uh, moments and and that's really what keeps you kind of uh, stuck in this uh, in this abusive relationship you know is that you tolerate all this abuse because you hope oh but if only we go back to the highs you know it's literally like a heroin junkie walking around the streets you know hoping to get their fix and not realizing that yeah okay the fix will will be good for an hour or so but then you're going to be back in the streets uh, walking like a zombie you know and that's similar to what happens in a, in a relationship with a borderline or a, or a, or a narcissist uh, I, I mean i remember in the first year of my relationship with this person um 
it would be very strange actually there would be periods of time when we were together where uh, basically uh, the devaluation or the uh, the cycle would happen on a daily basis you know so uh, i would go to work you know and then i would come back and we will meet you know and then there will be some kind of episode some kind of devaluation you know and then i would uh, i would uh, uh, push pull away and i would say look no uh, we need to go back to normality and then in the evening we would make peace and we would go out on a date and then day after the whole thing starts again you know and uh, she devaluates me or does something stupid and then i'm like no this is not working and then the evening we try to fix it by going out to a pub for instance or going out for a walk and being nice to each other and then the day after it happens again you know it was ridiculous it happened all the time i mean on a daily basis you know and then you're you know i was i i was a, a, a drug addict you know i wanted to to have the good moments with this person so this is the third point which is the trauma bond uh, trauma abuse cycle kind of thing and then the final point is when you want to leave or, or in case you are left uh, uh, this is also a, a manipulation tactic if they leave you this is also uh making your your brain go crazy you know i mean you've been you're being abused and this person is also leaving you and you'll likely fall into the trap of wanting this person back um i i don't have too much experience with uh, the discard uh, because uh, i was the one who uh, left the borderline or the narcissist most of the times uh, there were times in which uh, she tried to discard me and i would kind of call her bluff and she would eventually uh, come back most of the times. Uh, sometimes I uh, approached her uh, for to make her come back. But, you know, I, to me, it was 100% crystal clear that this was a, an abusive relationship, you know. So she wanted to leave beyond abusing me. I would be like, yeah, okay, go away. I mean, like, uh, how, you know, are you crazy? You should be kissing the ground that someone is dealing with your bullshit. Anyway, so uh, the... Uh, on the wanting to leave you know when you decide that you've had enough with this uh, with the borderline or a narcissist whether you initiated the discard or whether they initiate it and you just don't want to hear from them and go no contact they will pull every single card out there you know i mean i've broken up with girls with partners in my life and uh, and yeah of course it's tough you know but you know you act like adults and it kind of it kind of ends uh, you know it's uh yeah it's tough a few cries a few tears and uh maybe some uh, fights but uh, that's it you know it was more or less civilized nothing compared to the borderline or the narcissist you know the borderline or the narcissist will you know um will try every single manipulation tactic they will cry they will tell you that you are the best in the world and that their life makes no sense without you they will tell you that um they will love bomb you they will make you make try to boost your ego you know i mean i used to have my my ex-girlfriend when i when i would break up with her she would tell me oh i'm never going to meet a man like you you are so cool you're so intelligent you're so sexy you're so this you're so that you know and of course uh, the manipulation here is that you think wow if this person really values me so much they surely would put in the effort to um, not to lose me at least that's kind of my thinking you know of course i'm happy that uh, to get these compliments but what kind of made me stuck or what made me think oh no we should try is that i'm thinking wow if this person has keeps me in such high uh, esteem uh, at least in my mind i would do anything you know to to avoid losing a person that i think is sexy is cool is funny is you know intelligent blah 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 um so so you start uh, getting hopes that you know this person realizes what they're losing and that they uh, will put in the effort to avoid uh, the abuse you know so that definitely um made me um made me stay uh, more than i should have probably and then of course the problem is that you know you stay and then a couple of weeks go by and uh, <laughs> again maybe a couple of weeks or even less uh, the abuse starts again so there is no no solution um and then other manipulation tactics is uh, you know suicide threats uh, it's um i mean uh, once i remember uh, this was early in the relationship i broke up with this person you know and she used to live in another country and uh, i tell her look uh, this is too abusive for me basically it doesn't work anymore for me you know and i decide to block her and so on and then the mother calls me the mother calls me and tells me 
look, this person took the car. She, uh, she is in a, a kind of altered mental state, not because of drugs, but just because of the emotions. I don't know where she's going. I am really concerned, you know? And then, of course, you're... I mean, I was in love, you know, so your protective instinct kind of kicks in and also your fear that she might do something stupid and that you will feel guilty about it. And of course, at least at the time uh, when you break up, you're not 100% sure that you're taking the right decision, you know. So you're thinking, oh my God, maybe I'm not even sure I want to break up with this person. What if she takes her own life, you know. So I end up uh, calling her uh, to tell her to basically go back home, you know, and uh, I'm uh, talking to her on the phone and she's completely hysterical, completely hysterical. It's like, uh, I don't want to live, blah, 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 or this or that. And then I tell her, okay, okay, just go home and we will talk, you know, so kind of giving her, because of course I was afraid, you know, she's in a car, I don't know where in her city, I'm not there in the country, and I was worried for, for her. And I tell her, oh, let's go, uh, just go home and I promise to you we, we can have a chat or something. And her immediately switched, immediately switched, immediately she was happy, immediately she was uh, uh, ecstatic kind of, you know, and, uh, she she went back home and it's like nothing ever happened. And I'm like, what the, what the hell, are you, are you kidding me? I mean, I'm, uh, um, I'm, uh, you're manipulating me so bloody clearly. And now you're, after you manipulate me to get you to call you or your mother as well is manipulating me and then suddenly you're happy don't you realize that this is like abuse what you're doing to me you know and you're just acting happy so this happens a lot to a lot of people uh, uh, about these uh, suicide threats and unfortunately uh, usually if you are with a narcissist or with a borderline the only way you can be with them is if you are an empath so uh, you have a tendency to uh, be protective uh, and uh, uh, now I'm, old, I'm talking about how wh why is it hard to leave but one of the things you have to do when you realize that you need to leave is you need to accept that you are not responsible for the actions that they take and you know I would not feel guilty at all if this person took their own life I mean I gave what about the consequences of their actions on on me you know what about the consequences of their actions on uh, the way i trust people the way i engage with uh, uh, future relationships you know i have consequences out of their actions and uh, i decided to leave because of that you know i am not responsible if they take a, a decision to you know take their own life or, or self harm and this sounds harsh <laughs> especially if you're in love but this is how it has to be when you break up uh, and it's definitely a, a learning journey. And I definitely uh, did not think like this. I definitely uh, slipped and I definitely thought that the worst thing could happen is that they take their own life and that I would feel responsible. And I definitely slipped on the suicide uh, threats. So uh, to sum it up, uh, first of all, it's not a usual relationship. So many of us come unprepared. So you need to kind of forgive yourself for not knowing about this. Second point is that it's not like they start like this a hundred percent at the very beginning it's a very slow process so um this is how they get people in and that's how you stay kind of abused also because you hope that the good moments would come back and this is yeah the third point is about the, the high uh, cravings and the, this uh, intensity that you want back or these good moments that you want to relive that keep you and make you accept all the uh, crap that you have to deal with and the fourth point is that not only it's all this abuse and all this confusion beforehand, but also when you want to leave, they will pull every single card out of there to manipulate you and get you to stay.